Hello everyone, welcome back to Magic the Gathering Arena, more Merge at Karlov Manor. Uh, it's just, format's just about over. Why, oh, there's some good ones here. I, I, I mean, do you take no witnesses? I think you do, right? Like, it is a good card, even though white doesn't like to board clear? No. Draft Sim actually says it's not all that good, because board clearing is bad for white, I guess. And because it's slow, like it takes a long time. I'll just take Torch the Witness. Great card. Sign me up. Hello, wow, Thraven Inspector? Or Novice Inspector. Also very good. But it's not like you're going to wield Novice Inspector, right? So let's just grab the torch. Detective Satchel. That's a yes please from me to go with my Torch the Witness. How good does Draftsim say this thing is, anyway? Quite good. I was worried that, you know, as the format went on, it might have started to get bad. Um, Out Cold would be a good pickup, and so would the Furtive Courier. Um, for, like, a kind of tempo-y deck where we want clues, you know? Out Cold would be better, but this, like... Sacrificing artifacts and getting clues, like, that's what Red Blue wants to do. So this is pretty cool, and it's something you can actually curve out with. So I think I will take the Courier. I could be wrong there. I'll grab the card that is red and blue. No really more detailed analysis than that needed. It's a good card. It's, I mean, it's fine, at least. Uh, ooh. Surveillance monitor, huh? I mean, it doesn't really belong in this deck. I actually think this might be... I don't think I've ever taken Crime Novelist. But, you know, like, I mean, the fish is so much better. But, I mean, I think I'm taking the Crime Novelist. I'm trying to build that red-blue clue deck. Fish is a nice pickup at this time. Um... Not a fan of Sudden Setback. I'll take another fish. Demand Answers is fine. Interesting to see on the job so late. I wonder if red-white is the place to be. We haven't gotten a lot of blue, right? I'll pick this white card up in case that's the right direction. Let's even put it in the main deck to remind me that, yeah, we might actually not be blue. Red seems like a good color to be in, though. A lot of that was, was wheeling. Uh, Maskmaker sucks. Fester Leech, kind of a shocker, but I think Jaded Analyst is fine in... I don't know, Fester Leech isn't amazing, but it's a good card. You wouldn't think it would make it all the way through the wheel. And Jaded Analyst can often attack if you have a bunch of clues, making it a, you know... Two mana, three, two Vigilance is a pretty cool card. But of course it isn't actually that. Alright, pick up the white card here, I think. I think I will sideboard these, actually. Apparently all it takes to make me really commit to blue is a jaded analyst. Ooh. I, could, I was thinking of taking... I mean, I, I wasn't... I don't know. The first time I saw this pack, this was like a card that I was like, oh, that's not bad. Oh, I love this last pick, jaded analyst. Okay, looking happy here. Drown in the lock. Yeah, that's blue-black, right? Yeah. Uh, what are you? Forensic Gadgeteer. Three mana... When you cast an artifact, investigate. Activate the of artifacts and you control cost one less to activate. What the hell? That's insane. I mean, I was... I, when I saw Harry Dronesmith, I was like, Oh, that could be a pretty cool card for this deck. What about Detector Inspector? This guy is nuts. This is the card we want. Um... I mean... I think Suspicious Detonation is actually fairly good in a clue deck. Case of the Burning Masks is okay, but, you know, three mana for three damage, and it's double red as well. It's a little bit constraining. 
Um, we don't have much removal, so I want to take one of these over a land. I think we have none removal, in fact. Yeah. Oh, no, I have Torch. By the way, why is it down here? I thought they put the one mana value spells up at the top, usually. Anyway, Suspicious Detonation. These are both kind of mediocre removal, but I think we can make Suspicious Detonation work more often than we can benefit from Case of the Burning Masks. I think I'm inclined to take a Surveil, although taking one of these two clues... A clue weapon, a clue equipment, not bad. <laughs> but yeah, having interaction for the opponent is generally speaking a good thing. I'll take another over Bubble Smuggler, I think. Yeah, that seems fine. Oh, or I could take this. No. It's just, we have plenty of two-mana creatures already. I mean, I wouldn't mind another, but I want interaction more highly. Ooh, okay, Person of Interest is a great card. Um, we could take the combat trick that investigates if we're, like, trying to focus on clues, but this is just so much better. Take a Benthic Criminologist, I guess. I don't think I need any escape tunnels. Like, I'll just keep taking these two mana two ones. Hustle and bustle, I think, is okay. But a second demand answers. Like, if we're get, if we're if we have a bunch of clues, is this good? Not really. I mean, it's two mana draw two if we are unable to spend our clues otherwise, right? I don't think I really am going to benefit that much from Hustle and Bustle. I guess I'll take a second demand answers. Orangutan is great. Uh, this is a much better card than Orangutan, but our detective count is extremely low, and our clue count is extremely high. I mean... Criminologist is not a great card. We already have one. Magnifying Glass is not a good card either, but at least it, you know, it, it it certainly is a lot of clues eventually, and it ramps. Ooh. Okay. I mean, I'm taking the Gear Drake. Aren't these like the top two cards in the set or something like that? <laughs> no. Okay. But Gear Drake is pretty high up there. Draft Sim says. Gleaming Gear Drake number 26. Anyway, this is, like, the top card in the set, and I don't know. Maybe we're supposed to splash for this, but I didn't take the fixing earlier, and I'm offered a really good card that's on color, so no need to deviate for that. F Fuss and Bother is good, but I think we want the Shock. All right, Red-Blue can cast both halves of Fuss, Fuss and Bother, even though we're not white. So we could do that. But I think just, like... Because right now I have Detonation and Torch the Witness are my two removals. And I think I would like more than that. Also, what is this? Oh, Millstone. Okay. Person of Interest is a great card, but I think I just want, like, more removal. And more Orangutans, please. I think. By Actually, Bystander is really good. Especially with Detective Satchel. So that's the take here. No lightning helixes. A counterspell would be fine. Pass? Offender at large is fine in decks that are not this one. Maybe I should have grabbed an uncommon, I guess, if I were worried about my collection. I mean, Surveillance Monitor is good-ish. Dogwalker is very good, but I don't really think we're, like, benefiting from any of the stuff Dogwalker does, whereas, like, a thing that makes a flyer. Kind of cool. We're trying to win with Thopters, maybe. Orangutan number two? Is it two or three? I'll take all of them. Ooh, 
I did say I would take all of them. I think that is correct. Courier number two. Well, actually, <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, this is so wrong. Don't take the second magnifying glass. Take another two mana creature, you idiot. But I can't help myself. We have plenty of two mana creatures, right? So like, I don't know. There is some universe where we get to like totally go off with double magnifying glass. I don't know. I think that's a pipe dream. But like, look at the two slot. What do I need another, another analyst for? So I think we can get rid of the knife. Um, Innocent Bystander, I think, is our worst two drop. We could cut that. There's so many, so many great clue cards here. <clears throat> I mean, investigating is really good. Huh. I don't know what to do, man. Maybe I can just cut the five drop because I have tons of card draw and I can play cheaper stuff instead. And, I mean, Reasonable Doubt is fine. <sighs> we don't need all these demand answers, I think. I get, like, how, how do you think about demand answers when you're sacrificing a clue instead of discarding a card? It's two mana. I mean, it's kind of a zero mana draw one, right? If you sack a clue? Yes. And that would be a good card to include in any deck. Zero mana draw one. But it isn't actually that. You still have to spend two mana, including a red source. And you draw two, which is cool, but it costs you, like, I don't know. It's, it's only that on a turn when you were willing to crack a clue anyway, right? And you often aren't that excited to just crack a clue. I have better stuff to do with my clues, like feed them to apes. Oh, artifact spells, by the way? Six. Including red herring. Okay. Oh, and these magnifying glasses. Oh, man. I mean... They're, they're like the worst card in the deck, but they might be the best card in the deck, man. Right? I think we have so much clue synergy that I can start cutting stuff like Person of Interest, right? And Surveillance Monitor. Mm, Gadgetech maybe is a keep. But like, all of this stuff is so heavily focused on clues. We get a ton of value from just playing as many of them as I can. Maybe cut the Jaded Analysts and call it a day? I, I want to see how well this like double magnifying glass thing could work. Maybe cut one of each of these, because, like, I don't know. Being able to attack with a Jaded Analyst is really cool, but I want to be like spending my mana on real things and not on cracking clues. I guess then the question is, what am I running Reasonable Doubt for? The idea is, like... I really should be cutting three drops, right? The idea is that I'll be like holding up mana to sack clues later, and so I can hold up mana for reasonable doubt while I'm doing that.
I don't know, this this is the wrong curve. I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to cut a three, but they're all so exciting. Maybe we don't need three orangutans, but like, I think we do. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna just roll with it. Oh, by the way, if we have Crime Novelist and that uh, three mana rare that makes stuff, makes artifact abilities cheaper, we can just crack all of our clues at once for free. Or for a single mana, I guess, and then get the mana back. Because it costs one to sack a clue, and you get a red mana every time you activate an ability of an artifact. Or something like that. Uh, no red source, but lots of good threes. I have so many twos. I think I'm going to mulligan here. Okay, sure. I'll put back one bystander because I already have two two drops and I want to make sure that like I, I do have a clue for orangutan so so it's good to keep it around I guess I would say run out the creature that can attack first I guess Golgari Tipster. Well, I can't be terribly mana efficient here. Unless I play this, which is awful. So is it just fish swinging in for four? I think I probably should... I think it's fine to torch this, actually, right? X is one... Because now I get the clue, so Orangutan can hit the field, and they don't get their mana. Playing against Kevin Sorbo, by the way. In case anybody missed that. Seems unlikely. Like, that's a name I've heard. I'd have to go look up who Kevin Sorbo is. Is this, like... An actor person, or... I don't know. I don't think it's very good to just drop a magnifying glass here, so I'll play the orangutan, but attack first, of course. I assume no blocks, yeah. With any luck, this is just something like Nervous Gardener. I don't know, like, Nervous Gardener would be pretty good for them, I guess. If they, or it could be, if they need more land. Now play a land and a disguise creature, is that the idea? Hmm. Okay. Kind of a nothing turn. Let's see, now I can play... The magnifying glass and a red herring. Or an analyst, but I think I want the red herring. So leaving red up here. Crocodile down. That's good. If they had been able to flip that, I would have been pretty unhappy. I wonder if they should have taken two more to... Oh, okay. Fine. Fuck me, I guess. I mean, if the orangutan trades for two two twos, it's not the end of the world, but it's not great. Four and tap, which means I couldn't still play the analyst. So, 
I guess it's best to play the analyst so that next turn if I draw a land I can play I can make a clue, crack a clue and swing. I mean, it's not looking great here. I'm very slightly ahead on board. An opponent has a hundred cards. And apparently they have a good blocker. I mean, I kind of just have to trade this, right? No. Because I can draw, like, a removal spell for this. One of those, like, the can't be countered does, five, does four, suspicious detonation or something. Is that what that's called? Yes. But I assume this is something they plan to block with. Three, three, huh? I did draw the land, so here we go. This is a great hit. This is probably like a land or something. Because now this can actually like start getting in unblockably to help me close out the game if they can't kill it. So this is, last turn they attacked with this one and held this back, and then they offered it as a blocker. Now it's the other way around. I don't know what this means. Maybe I'm actually supposed to block here because I'm winning the race by playing this guy. But that's pretty, like, one-dimensional. If they can remove this, I just lose. I think keeping another potential attacker to keep the pressure on is probably better. Plus, you know, they could easily just flip up here and ruin me. Oh, I can't play both of these. I can investigate, though, I guess, for what that's worth. Oh, wait, no, it tapped wrong. Oh. I, I, I looked at how it was happening, and I said, yep, that makes sense. It'll leave up four mana, but I want to spend the four mana on this. So I, I wasted four mana there. That could really matter. Because I need to spend four mana next turn. Well, six, really. Seven, kind of? I'm spending everything next turn, yeah. I cost myself the ability to play this next turn. By letting Auto Tapper do it. And like, I approved Auto Tapper's thing. I didn't just mindlessly click through. I was like, yes, looks great. Good work. Use up that colorless mana, Auto Tapper. Wrong. Or wait. Yeah. No. Because if I had tapped a mountain, I'd only have three plus this. I couldn't pay four and tap this. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Auto Tapper did the right thing. It would have been fine to tap the mountain instead, but it wasn't like necessary. Okay, I'm not blocking if you're just going to attack with one creature. Like, what would be a nightmare scenario for me? I don't know. Nothing? Because right now, apparently, this 3-2 is holding off both of these from attacking. Because if, if I just had this, I think they should be swinging in with everything. So I'm sort of stopping four damage a turn with this creature somehow. Yeah, please, just play more face downs. That's all I need.
Oh, I shouldn't have played the land. I forgot about this effect. Shoot. Because this is going to draw and discard. And I might have wanted to dump the land instead of playing it. Although a second blue source is nice. This is just too far away. Like, this is never going to do anything. Okay. I mean, I'm taking a lot of damage. Yeah, I should have just traded this off earlier, but the problem is they always were in a position where, like, they were attacking while they had five mana up, and I could have gotten ruined. But if I picked a blocker where that wasn't an issue... Ah, uh, okay, this is interesting. I'll block here and get owned, I guess. If this flips into something with Trample, I would be very surprised, right? Like, it could be Rift Burst Hellion, but that doesn't Trample. It can't be anything else relevant that's red. The Trampling Red guy is double red. There's a green Trample, but that gives everything a counter, so they'd be attacking with everything. I'm just going to block max damage here. Even though this means my 3-2 gets killed. No, I could have just made this trade ages ago. It was a swamp. I don't know, man. At some point I thought this one was a land and this one wasn't. Wait. Oh, they're at 5 again because of... Okay, I lose. I, I didn't notice when they gained the life off of uh, this guy. Alright, that ought to do it. Close game, though. Had them at two. Although I think they were hanging... Like, they had... They had that, um... Red spells and lands. They had the Alley Assailant, like, the whole time. So they, they were able to gain three life whenever it was necessary. So they were kind of always three life higher than it looked to me. But, I don't know. Great hand. Needs another land soon, but, like, I've got a lot to do on two if, if I don't find one. can even shock them, it turns out, if they play a two-drop that merits shocking, like this one. Uh, I think it's Bystander over Fish, because this guy benefits from Fish? Yes, of course. Also, I think, generally speaking, you want to play your non-haste minions first. Minions, creatures. For some reason, this like whole thing about playing the the hasty stuff after the non-hasty stuff is still rooted in my mind in like Hearthstone, which is when I kind of learned that concept. And it doesn't always apply or anything, but it it, it was like some rag lethal puzzle, right? Where it was like, you know, do you play an eight eight or do you play Ragnaros first? And you get you end up getting in more damage overall. I don't know. It comes out this. It's weird. It always seems like playing the hasty thing out first should do more damage, but it kind of doesn't. I don't know. Anyway, either way, in this case, we obviously want to play the non-artifact spell first. This isn't itself a clue, is it? No. 
Oh, nice. That's all they're gonna do? And they're spending that on, like, a piece of junk instead of on my sick rare. Is this a rare or uncommon? That's a rare, right? That's, like, yellow or something? Yellowish? I mean, I see it very rarely, so it must be a rare. Uh... I think it's just, like, magnifying glass here. And I can actually crack the clue that it comes with. That's nice. So maybe I can even hit a land? Could have swung first, I guess, but it's not going to affect whether they block, I assume. Yeah, I mean, with this guy on the field, Magnifying Glass is a three-mana mana rock that draws a card and then also has this Investigate effect. Oh, well, I guess it's a three-mana tapped mana rock in that case. Boo! But, yeah, fair enough. I mean, that makes sense. So, we could torch this. But I think it would be better to play out two creatures, right? Yeah. Reasonable doubt would be a great thing to have for makeshift binding. Sorry, to, to have, it would have been great to have been able to counter the makeshift binding, but obviously I couldn't do that. Well, I mean, I don't know. I could have, like, played nothing instead of playing Magnifying Glass, but that's just stupid. Opponent's been stuck on three lands for a while. Right, they're player one, and I missed a land once, so they must have missed one, like, twice. I'm not making this block, obviously. And if they miss again here, it'll be three times. Sack a creature that did damage. Draw three. Wow. This was a good creature, too. Okay. We're just going to empty the board. You have nothing. So I cannot crack a clue, or make a clue and crack a clue. This adds mana, but only after you're done sacrificing. So, we just attack. We're definitely holding up Reasonable Doubt, and I believe we're playing the other Magnifying Glass, right? Because if I don't need to Reasonable Doubt, I can actually tap this Magnifying Glass, can't I? No. Okay, but anyway. It's this or make a clue. Well, maybe I want the clue more than I want another Magnifying Glass, but no, I don't know. Mana's pretty good when you have a mana outlet like these guys. A reasonable Doubt looks very good here. I'm, I'm very happy to have it. Because they, they have little enough mana that I should be able to counter anything relevant. Suspect the fish. The problem is they're still at 18. <laughs> oh, they gained the life here. Case of the Stash Skeleton. All right, you got it. Me being at 13 is kind of unpleasant for that. Uh, oh yeah, I can't do this. Okay. 
So we might torch this? It gives them access to tutor, but do they really want to spend the mana on it? Five, six, seven mana. So if I make a clue and crack it, I don't have enough mana to do anything else. Unless I hit a land and then I can torch the witness. But I could just like bounce this, hold up reasonable doubt, and investigate with magnifying glass, which seems okay. I don't think I want to let them have this skeleton. I don't know. I probably should, right? I'm not, like, getting crushed in the race, and giving giving them the solution to the, the case is probably not very good. But this is a good creature when you're when you're the aggressive deck, and it seems as though they are. So I don't like leaving it on the field for them. But bouncing it is also bad. No. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just make it clear. No. Yes, play this. And tap like that. I think these are way better used dealing with whatever they play next than dealing with this silly little 2-1. I could even tap it down with Researcher if I wanted. That's kind of cute. Sure. Yep. Damage. So let us bounce their one one and kill the two one. Pretty good, I guess. I probably should have tapped a clue here, actually. Or a, one of these guys. Doesn't matter. And I'll hold this back to tap down the skeleton. But now I'm, I'm not presenting, yeah, because I tapped wrong, I'm not threatening Counterspell, which is a little bit unpleasant. It would be better for them to at least worry about Counterspell. I 
Actually, I am because I could uh, I could untap my blue source, right? It's kind of funny. Okay, good game. Three. Oh, hang on. Uh, full control? Ah, uh, no. Okay, I should have tapped this first. Doesn't matter. I could destroy their clue. That would be funny. Oh, I guess I could have. I, well, mm, yeah. I put the ability on the stack and then respond to the ability. Full control would have let me tap this, for mana. but it doesn't matter because I don't have the mana to do anything. Yeah. Okay. Tap this as well, please. Got there. Um, I mean, opponent was struggling in the early game, and we didn't exactly crush them. I would prefer to crush people who are struggling, not just, you know, manage to escape victorious. But I'll take the win. And we managed to make that skeleton thing not actually be good, right? It put life pressure on me, but I kept enough control of the board that they weren't really the aggressive player, which meant that the skeleton was just bad. J. Rextasy. I don't really understand that. This is not great, but we have the inst like these three cards are all insane together, right? This is like, I don't know, this is a pipe dream. <laughs> but wouldn't it be cool if? I don't even know what you would play first. Hopefully I draw some two drop that makes it so I don't have to make that choice. Yeah. Hey, we did it. I mean, I guess I still have to choose, but at least like having this Having a two drop on the field might guide the decision. What I really hope is that I draw a two drop so I can play a two drop, I guess. Boros. Demand answers Boros. Dumping goat? Ah. They were looking for their third land and still missed, I see. So I think it's Gadgeteer first. Because it gets me an extra clue when I play this. Whereas this doesn't really benefit from having either of these things in play. Wow! What the hell? That's something. Assemble the player's Boros stuck on lands. Anytime you cast, it's not just once per turn. Okay. So. Obviously, we wish to bounce that, I think. Although, I mean, what the hell am I supposed to do after that? I don't really have a way to kill it. Maybe bouncing it doesn't make sense? This card is so busted. It's one to crack a clue, which we're gonna do, so I guess let's do that first. Okay. This is actually something. They get it back, but then if they lose it again, it's dead? Hmm. 
I don't know. I don't have a way to kill it. It's the problem. But it comes back tapped and I get in for the damage, which is nice. And they're at 8. So yeah, maybe that's got to be the game plan. And they're struggling for land as well. So if we just bounce this, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I guess blue's fine. Maybe I should have done this before cracking the clue, so I could surveil first. Okay, we got him. That's how you deal with this. Just kill it over and over, because opponent doesn't have any mana. Um, got lucky to draw into the suspicious detonation when I cracked the clue. That was a, a perfect hit. Although it would have been fine, I guess, to miss and just play the bounce, and then later... On the next turn, like, I could have reversed the order of those two two mana plays, right? If I had like been, if the suspicious detonation had been a card or two deeper in the deck. But if it wasn't close to the top, I was gonna have some issues. Do I mean, demand answers, and that phoenix, that is serious, right? They get to fuel their graveyard with a ton of evidence. So that that thing just can't get killed. It's a good thing they were stumbling on mana, or I, I think we would have had a really tough time winning that game. Yes, I accept. Look at all these twos. I, if you run at the mountain, Arena will rat you out as for having shock, so I'm just not going to do that. Uh... Is this a time for red herring first? Because they have a 2-2? No, I don't know. Not really? I think it's just Analyst, because they're going to hate to attack into this. And I wouldn't mind if they killed the Analyst. Okay. Now what? It's an inefficient turn no matter what. How much does a little extra board presence help me? Or if I played the fish? Not very much. I think they're happy to trade with their disguise creature and investigate. It's investigate, right? Not draw a card? Yes. And this isn't really doing anything. I think I just run out the magnifying glass so I can start trying to go off with a satchel and a bunch of mana. Ouch. My creature. He's very sick. Ah, it's still not an efficient turn. I have five mana and I can't like do anything. I think I have to play both of these. Maybe play this and a fish? Pre or post combat? Maybe play... A bystander and bounce this? Sure. Who was player one this game? It was me, right? Yeah. So nobody's missed any lands yet.
Yeah, I mean, I can bounce this so that they don't get the clue. And it slows them down. I think I'm supposed to. I don't know. I get punished if this is a combat trick or something, but I think they would have used that rather than just passing to me in that case. Unless they have one that they're, like, feeling eh about using. I don't know. Shock is perfect. Leave that on top. Really? What? You should have used this, right? In response to the bounce? Huh. Okay. Oh no, that turns it. No, it turns into a two-two because it gets a counter. Yeah, huge blunder, right? Uh, so do we play out both creatures or get started on the satchel? I think I want more creatures. Bam! Down to eighteen. Finally getting going on the game plan of damaging the opponent until they die. Ooh, that's spooky. Mm. Well, attack with fish, I guess. I think we want to run this out because if I hit a land, I can play Satchel and Crack Clue on the same turn. Whereas if I play this out first, I'm not, it's not really doing much until next turn anyway. Okay. It's very upsetting. It's a land. Okay, we did it. Oh, I should have attacked the fish. Shoot. Because it's about to just kill itself for no reason. Whoops. Didn't even think about it. I mean, so what it's cost me is a clue, right? I would have had one more clue if I had done that. And that is pretty impactful, I think. The good news is a 4-4 reach is quite strong at the moment. But I think I'm well behind here. These flyers are going to eat me alive. It's like the orangutan can't really attack into them, or it just dies to a bunch of little chaff. And... It's fine on blocks, but they're still getting with Drinker Vampire value that way. I definitely wish I had more clues. Uh, you know, which I would have had if I'd sacked the fish like a good player. I don't want to destroy any of their artifacts. No, okay. I mean, I do have the sick, like, make a, make a clue and crack it every turn combo together with this and Crime Novelist. Like, I definitely have a potential plan. I just, they have, these are really good. <laughs> if they can disrupt me at all, I'm in a lot of trouble. They also just have that, of course. Keep draining me. No, I'm being disrupted. Hmm, okay. 
I thought they might go for the satchel? Yeah, that seems like it would have been better, right? So now I can do this. I'm building up enough flyers to actually block their flyers even though they killed my reach guy. Right, I can block the 1-3 now. Still scary. Okay. I mean, I'm taking a lot of damage per turn. Uh, let's see. It's an artifact, but it can't be destroyed. This destroys. Could destroy that. But I think, I mean, it's important to be able to sack a clue, and I can't do all of these things, can I? Maybe I can. Four and tap. Yeah, I can. No, I can't. Because cracking a clue still costs one net mana. Hmm. Even with the crime novelist. gonna be able to give all this stuff death touch and lifelink in a minute this entered the battlefield this one of these entered the battlefield this turn right yeah so no lands thanks i guess it doesn't matter i, I lost the one mana from crime novelist already so having one more mana wouldn't actually help this turn okay they can only attack with a 1-1. One, one. I'm pretty chill with that. Draw a card and you lose a life. This, this is suspected, and if you block it, you take, like, a, more damage. So, I'm not going to do that. I guess they... Okay, they found their 7th mana. That's... That's the scary thing. I need a way to kill that vampire very soon. Like, Suspicious Detonation would kind of win the game, Maybe? I think so. That is still in the deck, right? Yeah. Or Torch the Witness is pretty good as well. Ah! You are a fucking maniac, man. Still not killing the satchel. I mean, yes, the three damage was a pretty cool part of my plan. And I'm sad that that is gone. But you had so much life gain, I think. Yeah, just like making sure I couldn't continue to do this was probably better. Um... Well, it's important to play this first, I guess. X 
exit, huh? Well... I somehow thought I'd have enough mana to play the Orangutan. What do I wish to exit? Huh. I can get my orangutan back, but just for a turn. I could use that to destroy their 2-1, but it doesn't really matter. could bounce this because it's what's doing damage to me at the moment. I guess that's fine. But the Whispering Cure Vampire is obviously the biggest problem. I'm still like waiting to draw an answer to that. Oh yeah, it still does one damage to me. It's even worse, because it does damage to me and heals them. <laughs> Great. I don't think I care about having this be a 4-4 reach. I just want to get rid of one of their creatures. Because of Death Touch, Lifelink. From the Whisperinker Vampire. <sighs> and I think I keep playing lands. We have an outlet for a lot of mana. I have this 6-8, but they have an indestructible 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I really should have let that attack me instead of bouncing it. Because I'm, I'm about ready to start swinging with a 6-8, right? And if this had been tapped, that would have been a better play. Like a, a real play. Yeah, bouncing that was terrible. Reasonable Doubt is awful, by the way, of course. I don't know. I mean, this game is hopeless. I'm, I can't win. Right? There's no way to deal with this. They've got so much life gain from here. If I draw a kill spell for this right away... Okay. Maybe I can just kill them in time, right? X is like three. Hang on. I should do all the other stuff first, right? Uh, whoops, wrong button. Um, because this is... This, then spend one more to crack the clue. Yeah, that's fine. Gleaming Gear Drake. Okay. We might be able to outrace this 1 1. I don't think so, though. They have enough chumps. Yeah, of course, do that. So now I don't have an attack with the 7 9. I 
know, this hits really hard. But, like, the fact that they can block with this and make 1-1s one and then block with those... At some point, I might just be able to do an all attack, though, to finish things off. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can win this. If they, if they have nothing, ever, right? That's fine. That actually helps a lot. Because this not being suspected is... Oh, but it's... Well, now it can block, actually. Huh. Interesting. Which means if... Like, my 7-9 is never doing anything. Okay, a 4-4 four, four is sort of relevant now. They still don't have any artifacts besides the indestructible one. I want to make this guy huge. How huge does he have to be? Like, ideally he would be an 8-8, eight, eight, right? Then they couldn't kill him at all? It's not that far off, is it? I think I want to make sure I'm making at least one clue every turn, but maybe that's not relevant. I mean, I can crack all of these for free, and I think I should. This is the combo I mentioned a while ago. The okay, Researcher is great because I can tap down their indestructible blocker when I swing with my huge guy on the ground. Ooh. Okay, kill the 4 3. Suspecting zero, sure. I think we want to swing with these at this I have so many of them. I'm trading one of them off for like six damage. I probably should have done this last turn. But I didn't have this as well. Now that I have both of these, I think it makes a lot of sense to attack with the tokens. Shouldn't have played this pre-combat, though. I kind of trapped myself into it by getting the mana generated at the wrong time. I was just trying to work through what I could play, and I wasn't really thinking about the sequencing of the rest of my turn. Tons of evidence, right? Yeah. Okay, it gains lifelink, no big deal. You could have actually flipped that pre-blocks and killed this, right? No. Target my 11-13, right? Seems good. I could have targeted their 1-1, I guess. Big crime novelist. 
I never imagined I would be able to counter something when they have 10 lands. What did they spend all the mana on? I guess they, like... That was the turn they cast Lamasu, and then they flipped one of these guys, and then they cast this. Yeah. Come on in. Don't just pump it and kill me. Oh, it gains lifelink. Fine. Okay. Now this... They enter tapped. So if I, like, tap down one of their lifelinkers and all attack, I think we get there. Like, they have to play multiple creatures here, I think. But if they play zero creatures, we definitely get them. If they play one, I don't know, I would have to do some math. These can... Oh, these are only creatures. That's why they didn't get rid of this stuff. I somehow thought this was, like, anything. Aha! I think we win. Oh, no, that's... There we go. Whew! I was despairing a while ago. This this is the clue synergy all coming together. I definitely made some misplays that game. But... I finally drew into the stuff... That, oh, I didn't realize... I never once looked at my deck size. Okay, so... I guess... The stuff I needed to win the game was at the bottom of the deck, and I still got there. Thanks to all the drawing. Okay. Well, congratulations to me. I'm a genius. I forget if I mentioned, by the way, at the start of the video. You, you might have noticed here the event ending. So, I think it was my last video. I said OTJ is coming out soon, and I do plan to play it, but I wasn't sure when that video was coming out. I guess it came out yesterday. Uh, so, OTJ is coming out tomorrow, both at the time of this recording and when this video is published, so I plan to be playing it, but I'll, I might play some more MKM before that, so I don't know how I'm going to do the video releases, whether I'll just release both videos or what. <laughs> it seems crazy to heat the magnifying glass, but it is like a combo. It is an important part of the deck. Ooh, that was a great draw. God, Blue Black's just gonna fucking counterspell me, aren't they? But I, I think you still play into it, like, right? I don't know. Maybe I let them tap out here. Just try to shock their turn three disguise creature and then land this. I think that makes sense. Because this, this is a slower matchup. And this is a really powerful combo that I don't want to allow them to just, like, counter. I don't know. It's a wimpy play, but they're going to have counters slash removal. And now I at least get my creature to resolve. So let's do this one first. This is a tempting removal target. I don't know. I'm playing very scared. I'm not sure whether that's right or wrong. I don't think I want to offer this trade. 
Because we're not far off from actually getting this to be an unblockable threat that draws cards. Oh my god, this is fantastic news. They're not killing the 2-3. And they're tapping out. So I get to play Magnifying Glass, and then Orangutan to sack a token and swing in. Or I guess I could sack the clue to draw for just one mana and play this guy out. But a 4-4 is so sick, right? I think a 4-4 is sick. It just completely holds down the fort against the 3-2, which otherwise would be attacking me. Oh. Let's do it. Um. Yeah, I guess so. Well, actually, no. Because if I had drawn a land, I could have activated this. Ooh, fish, huh? That's pretty cool. But let's do this first. I don't think I need to play this land, right? It's a nice loot target. Ah, but it would let me crack the clue. Got it. Right. Okay, I mean, pretty cool stuff. We have, like, all the combo pieces assembled, aside from the satchel. Oh yeah, I can't- I was thinking- no, but I can make more clues. I can make more clues. I don't need a satchel. This can't be countered. Let's just kill their 2 2. And I don't want this mountain. Although I do like land. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mind a double block here. Because that would mean they're taking five from the flyer. And I don't really need it as a blocker. Fine. Well, it looks like they didn't have the counterspell, but if they had, like, I still think it was right to play scared, because getting these things to resolve was just game-winning, even though I was somewhat inefficient. Right? Uh, okay, let's do it again. 
Well, I don't even have to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. Swing out, I guess. They dumped an alley assailant. I don't think I need this as much as I want to make sure I have tons of lands. Yeah, let's run out the unblockable creature, but hold up a bounce spell in case I need it. instead of running out another creature. Actually, reasonable doubt isn't bad here. Oh, you know what? I, I, made, I made a mistake. That was the wrong play. I'm so far ahead that it was okay, an opponent conceded. I should have let this resolve, and then, still on their turn, bounced the coerce to kill. Because then the creature would still be on the battlefield on my side, and I'd have lethal this next turn while they're tapped out. So yeah, that was a mistake. Okay, up to four. It was looking a little sketchy there. Like, the first couple games... You know, I, I lost game one, right? And then... Game two was kind of a stomp. Game three, we scraped by... Game four was the one that just took forever, and we finally won. And then game five was the one we just played there where our opponent didn't have any mana, so they died. This is why I don't like the idea of just, like, cutting to 16 because the shuffler is rigged. It's only rigged for turn one, and I don't know. Like, drawing lands is pretty cool. You can use mana to cast spells. Tethanos? Tethanos? I don't know how you... This is not recognizable to me as, like, an orthographic system. I don't know what to do with that accent. It's like a a grave accent, right? Or grave? I don't know how you even pronounce that. Or is that? No, that's, that's acute, right? I think so. Acute. What is the difference here? The acute goes, yeah, that way. So what, what does a grave accent mean? Backward leaning grave accent used to indicate an unaccented syllable or a lower inflection. Huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's fine, I guess. I mean, red herring on the draw is not as exciting as on the play, but nothing ever is. We have researcher. I don't know. I mean, it's not a great hand, but it's clearly a keep. Face up, Nervous Gardener, yeah. It's probably pretty good for you. Trade with the fish. I appreciate opponents' non-greed. I think it was the right play, probably. Ooh, Sultai. That's gonna be... You need... I don't know what we're gonna need. More... <sighs> um... I think we play out this first, right? Because these make fast mana, but I can't use the fast mana, and this makes slow mana. So, like, next turn I could conceivably play this and then still play something for three. Like, could I play both of these? Is that true? I think so. Three, four, five, yeah. I hate this. Well... I'll have a 4-4 four, four orangutan eventually. <laughs> what a turn. Double magnifying glass. Oh, man. Buckle up, kids. You're in for an is-it deck with 
Clue synergy. Another Nervous Gardener. Okay, that explains partly why they were willing to play the other one. Obviously, I also should have played an island rather than a mountain here. I'm a little bit color imbalanced, but it's fine. The island's still in hand. No rush. Okay, I guess I'm just going to die. I can make a clue, but I can't make a clue and orangutan, right? Even if I use this to untap. This costs five, and this costs three. And I have five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I can do that. Okay. Well, I guess that's what we're going to do. They don't have any clues right now. I'm going to go for this. They probably have some combat trick, but I think trading, just trading for the Death Toucher is not a winning plan. Okay, it looks like at least I get to keep this. Chalk outline. Uh-oh. And then they're going to collect evidence for V2 Gazi Inspector? No, but they're going to trigger it. Okay. Well, well, well. This is bad. Bounce the clue? No, this is already in hand. Because they picked it back up with reconstruction. Okay. How can I not die? Playing mountain is a good first step. I can easily make the combat decision, which is attack with nothing. And then... Like, try to counter something, I guess. But it won't work. Unauthorized exit the token, I guess? It might be the clue, honestly. Because if I'm trading with this, I don't really have a way to deal with the cadaver over and over. But I, if I can't even deal with it once, then bouncing the clue is not going to help. I guess it's just pass here. And this way, if they have like a bite down on crime, I can deal with it with an unauthorized exit. Miserable. Yep. Oh, I should have should have blocked here and bounced the token, probably. I forgot that that was part of the potential plan. That's probably the Nervous Gardener, but it might not be. Now bouncing the clue kind of makes sense. But, I mean, I'm dead on board, right? So maybe I shouldn't try to prevent some future calamity. I should try to prevent the current calamity. Anyway, I can investigate, I guess. Yeah, I should have bounced this, I think. I don't know, it's just a disaster. Well, the clue is doing way too much for them. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll do it that way. Yep, 
Because the clue is a detective and a cadaver. This, I mean, kind of lives. I guess it's good. I want a cheap creature so I can play it, crack a clue, and play something else. It was the Nervous Gardener. Okay, I mean, on board, we're doing fine. They can't kill me. They can't even get through. Well, the problem is they're going to have, like, cards. Another macabre construction? That would be pretty cool. No, just another face-down card. Okay, I mean, I can kind of cope with that. Shock it? Hope not. Yeah, I think I have to shock the Nervous Gardener because... I need to be cracking clues here, and I only have enough mana to... I don't have enough mana to pay for ward if I do that. And if they can probably flip this into an actual threat is the problem. You know what? I hold on to the clue. I pay for Ward to stop this from attacking me. Yes. So I guess I shouldn't have made the clue main phase, but I guess it also doesn't matter because I'm hellbent anyway. It's not like I'm threatening anything. Oh, I don't have to pay for the ward. Nice. Actually, Orangutan's a perfect hit. There you go. Preserve maximum granularity for all my other evidence effects, of which there are zero. Okay, this is something, um, am I really tapping those? I guess it doesn't matter, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack a clue, so yeah, okay, fine. cards leave your graveyard. Okay, so probably won't be happening at instant speed, so let's assume it's just a 3-4. So we'll tap the 5-5, five, five, I guess. I mean, we can definitely chop the 5-5 five, five with the 1-1, one, one, and I can't really do much better against this 3-4. Like, I can't kill the 3-4 anyway. And just in case it can gain lifelink at instant speed, I guess... I'll kill it, or I'll tap it. I'm going to preserve this, even though I could investigate by sacking it, because I want to try to accumulate enough, tough, enough power to kill one of these. Okay. Nine mana? Ten if I use this, but I don't want to. So investigate. Orangutan is huge. And I do have to sack a clue for this, obviously. And I can't... means I can't draw with a clue, but... Could I afford to Forensic Researcher for another Thopter? I think yes. That's just better than tapping their shit. I should have been doing this all along. Ah. 
Well, I guess this 3-4 could gain menace, and that would be a problem. What are my blocks looking like? Double block here. Single block here, I guess. So actually tapping down the 5-5 five five is arguably better than making a Thopter. Or sorry, yeah, I think so. But I can still just, like, I can chump the 5-5. Five five. Yeah, it's, it's just better to not spend evidence. If they can make a creature card leave their graveyard, we're miserable whether or not they actually get to attack with this because of Chalk Outline. Okay, that's fine. Wrong one, question mark? I guess it doesn't matter. I think it was the wrong one. It should have been the three, four, because then like you could attack with both if you wanted, and it wouldn't be terrible. I guess we'll do it again. I guess if I'm holding up one mana, it's for... Do I still have a shock in the deck? I don't. So it doesn't really matter how I tap here. I don't think we're ready to start attacking, but it's looking okay on the board at this time. We might even be able to cope with them cracking some clues. Or activating the chalk outline, I should say. Well, I guess I didn't mean crack clues, because that gets them back. Uh, yeah, and there goes my 4-4. That's pretty bad. Oh god, it goes off again. Okay, I quit. Ugh, I, I hoped we might have something, but we don't have anything, man. Aha, I investigate. And it turns out, by the way, making an artifact, making, un untapping to make another Thopter was wrong. It would have been better to tap this down since it did, in fact, get the menace. But, of course, it doesn't matter. Let's just go out with a bang. Oh, why did you tap both of those, you silly? I might have wanted to investigate. I mean, are we technically dead? Yes. I am dead. There is no way to survive. Um... Let's just make another Thopter then. Well, can't win them all. It was a tough... They 
did well early game to, like, actually put on pressure by, like... I mean, it sounds like a joke, right? They play the 2-2. Ah, so much pressure. Um, but it is, right? If they had just waited on, you know, as, as players often do, refuse to play Nervous Gardener until you have three mana, I would have had... It, it just, like, it hurts your curve so much um, to do nothing for a turn. Uh, I don't know. I, w I would have had a lot easier time in the early game. I wouldn't have been under so much life pressure. I think they still would have gotten me, but... <sighs> Without a mountain, this hand sucks. With a mountain, it's a great hand. But I don't think that's a good enough reason to keep it. Like, you can reasonable doubt on turn two, and that's fine. But I don't, I don't think you can keep this. This, you can't mulligan. It's way too good. I want all seven of these cards, of course. I have trouble identifying one to put back, honestly. I guess it might be the Researcher. I don't have any synergies for it right now, and I don't really need the mana. I do want to make sure I have three lands, but I guess maybe... I could just expect to draw a third? I don't know. I'll want a fourth and a fifth as well, so let's just get rid of this. Is this, I mean, doesn't really look like a plains to me. It looks like a tornado eating a mountain. A 1-3? How dare you? Oops, this one. Blue-white Gravestone Strider. What are they splashing for? Because this is not something you just throw into your blue-white deck. You would, like, this is best with green, because you have the collect evidence, like, you know, chalk outline and stuff like that. Huh. So I don't know what they're up to. Come on, I want to land, man. Get rid of one of the unauthorized exits. This guy actually just sucks right now, doesn't he? I, yeah, of course. Really? No. I, I mean, this is a mana rock, but I want to land. And I don't have any synergies for all the clues yet. Fish! Post combat fish, okay. Makes sense. I mean, I guess I do have this. It would be nice to, like, have the magnifying glass and be able to attack unblockably. But it's, like, seven mana to do that. I don't, I don't have seven mana. And also, like, it's not clear who's the aggressor here yet anyway. Um, I think I want to attack with the fish. Threatening to kill this? I don't know. I guess they're just going to be happy to block. So maybe I should have held the fish back. Okay, I'm fine with the trade. This is this is exactly what the best thing I could have hoped for. Don't click outside the window. Click inside the window on your three two. But we're well behind, I think. Like the 1-3 has stymied my 2-1, and they're well up on cards. Ugh. 
Ugh. Well, I don't know what to do about that. Play the fish and crack it, swing for six? Seems pretty stupid. But I guess what else is this fish ever doing, right? Oh, I shouldn't have played the land, I guess. Okay, that's a way I could win the race. Although I don't think I will. <laughs> Private Eye is serious business. If I could have pitched the land and kept this, I would be much, much happier. It's obviously a blunder to play the land. What are they holding six mana for, by the way? What? No, I don't want to... Why did it... Oh, this isn't... Okay, sorry. I got confused. Wait, what? I, I thought that this was unauthorized exit and I wanted to bounce the creature back to my hand so it wouldn't block. But then they traded with Private Eye instead of with this. Is this some misclick? Because they just stole it. Oh, well, they made it suspected, so it couldn't block. That's kind of funny. So it would have been wrong for me to bounce it anyway. But why did they block with the private eye? Like, stealing this and suspecting it was a gift. Man, I wish I had that unauthorized exit. <laughs> the one that I threw away for no reason to keep a land because I'm bad. But, I mean, the game's not looking that bad since they lost the private eye. I don't understand what happened there. They realized they couldn't block with this because it came suspected, and then they said, well, I can't let this 3-2 keep hitting me, so they gave away the, I guess. Ow. I just, I don't know if I would be willing to trade the private eye for that 3-2 is all. I'm tempted to hang on to this, though, and... Oh, okay. Because if I can start cracking clues on turns that I can attack with the detective and the courier, it's a lot better than just making a single thopter. Okay, I... I don't know what happened that game. It did not make a lot of sense. But we're at five wins. Blue Max or a Blum Axe? Sure. Any hand with Gear Drake is a keep. And I have Ports the Witness as well, so pretty happy. 
I guess I, I tried to play islands before mountains so that I don't reveal that I don't hold shock. But I forgot to do it this time. Don't shock me, bro. Okay. Cool. Mm, I think it's better to play this than to just crack a glue, right? I guess I could get punished for attacking if they had not on my watch. Oh, this is actually this defends against not on my watch, right? Or what is it? And what is what is not on my watch? Attacking creature, not tapped creature. Okay. Uh, I don't have enough. Well, I do actually. I have enough mana to kill this and get a clue because I can untap here. So I guess that's better than just playing out a herring and cracking a clue. Arguably. It was... okay, fine. Something that was going to try to kill my flyer. A Karlov Watchdog, sure. And we'll pump this rather than hold up Unauthorize exit. Pretty good tempo start. Alamasu! Oh no! Um. Yeah. I think I'll just bounce that. Are we attacking with the 1-3? It would let me have access to shock if I kept it, right? But I probably don't want to shock. And like I can always shock next turn if I have to. Like, I should have enough mana for it. So saving doing one damage is better than saving a mountain, I think. Boo. But still, we get a ton of damage here. Uh yeah, smash in. And I think we do want to sack the fish here. Well, no. Just having a 2-2 is better, right? Submit zero. I just want to have as many creatures because, like, shock is lethal if they take a single damage. I don't need a 4-4. Four -four. Great, looks like we're getting there. Yep, still getting there. I'll, I, I mean, they're dead on board even. I don't even need this. Thanks for suspecting the fish. Very, very noble. Just, I mean, aggressive stuff, right? The the turn two gear drake is unstoppable. 
and also playing like five other two mana creatures helps. Okay, let's see if we can beat the final boss here. Definitely some of these games I feel like I shouldn't have won. Like the game just before that one, when opponent where, where I threw away an unauthorized exit for no reason. I don't deserve to lose that. Boolean. Okay. Sure. I've got fish. I'll keep. Oh yeah, and the game where I threw away a fish. I did win that one eventually, right? That was the Whisp Drinker Vampire game. But I guess what I threw away was the clue, right? Because I could have I could have lost the fish instead of the clue. Green, black. They're not going to... I mean, I don't know. Hmm. Is it possible I want to wait on the Gear Drake? I think it is. Because I can't really do anything with it yet. It's just a 1-1. One, one. I want I want to wait for things to clear up a little bit. Because they can have, like, uh, Slice from the Shadows, and it would be nice if they had to pay a little bit more mana. Now, this guy's not really doing anything in the meantime anyway, right? So It's important to get value out of the fish while you can. I could have played another fish, obviously, and gotten in for more damage, but man, efficiency is important. And the researcher is ramp. Ooh, red. Uh-oh, uh-oh! No attacks? I guess that makes sense, actually, because I had a block here. If they attacked with everything, I could have blocked this, this would hit me, and they would draw a card, which doesn't seem so bad. Well, hmm. I want to, like, bounce the Yaris to trick them. But I don't want to just, like, throw away the fish. I think I want to bounce the Yaris and counter the Yaris, which means I'm just losing the fish, sadly. Maybe they won't block. It's so risky! What if I have... Oh, no, they're just blocking with the 2-2. Two -two. I see. I thought they were blocking with Yaris, which is very risky. This this play makes sense. And plays beautifully into my hands. Because now they don't get this back face up. And I was bouncing Yaris anyway. Got him. Okay, okay. Oh boy, oh boy. That is some shit. What do we do first? I can play this, untap a land, and make a Thopter. But I think I want to get the benefit of having both of these. So I'm just going to, like, swing with a fish. I don't think it would be crazy for them to block there. I think it would probably be good, in fact. It's like, yeah, this eventually becomes a like 3-2 suspect, but not anytime soon. Sure. Oh, okay. They were hoping to get a clue out of it. Fine. Yuck! That is a problem. I don't have enough evidence to tap this, because I have to collect three and four. So I'm just going to have to get attacked for a bit. 
And I'm not cracking the clue because I want to do that once I have the Thopter in play, or the Satchel to make Thopters in play. And I'm okay with not with crack, cracking a real clue instead of this. Because I, I wouldn't mind... I don't know. This trade here... Maybe I should have cracked the, the red herring. Um, because trading it for this gives them a clue, and so it's kind of negative value for me. Yeah, I think I should have sacked the fish. But I don't know, like... They have to spend mana on the clue. I don't know if it's necessarily that great for them. This has death touch, right? Yeah, so I'm never blocking this, even if this gets huge. I'll just block the four. And I think I'm torching the four four. It makes more clues for them, which is sad, but this 4-4 is the only thing that's really threatening me. So I'd be paying X is 3, so this would be 4 mana. I can still crack a clue. Yeah, okay. And make multiple Thopters, I mean. That's cute. Um... But not a good idea right now. Maybe I could have let this hit me one more time to develop the courier? I don't know. Did I? Oh, I haven't even done combat yet. Okay, I was like, did I forget to attack? No, not yet. I mean, we're threatening lethal. They have to do something. And if, if this is like a reach creature, I can tap it down. Whoa! Okay, hit me. Some lifelinker? Basilica stalker or something? No, that's not a lifelinker. It gains life, but not, not enough for this to be justified. Dailies who attack with creatures and they're about to concede? Maybe. That would be nice. Yeah, I got him. Yeah, gross, gross start. I do think it was correct and important to not play this on turn two. Because I, I didn't have, like, the tools to make it a real threat at that time. And the fish getting in for damage was, like, a real thing that mattered. I'm not sure about the turn when I attacked with fish into their 2-1 uh, when I could have sacked it to activate Satchel. Like, I sacked a clue. I could have sacked the fish clue, the clue fish. And it traded for their 2-1, which gave them a clue, so I don't know. They did appreciate the card draw. But I also appreciated them not having a 2-1 so that I was the only one putting on life total damage, right? I'm at 10. 
If they'd been attacking me for two more every turn... I don't know. I could have just, like, given one Thopter away into the 2-1. I think it probably was a mistake. I should have sacked the Red Herring instead of a, a Vanilla Clue. We did it, though. Seven wins. Great. Uh, what the heck is this? It's like... <laughs> is it... Magnifying Glass? Right, let's let's make that the deck. Uh, it, re it really was like, you know... A star performer in this deck. I'm glad I got to see that ever happen before... Um, the set rotated out. Two Magnifying Glasses. Who could have guessed? But that would ever be good. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.